I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. And today, I am fired up. Why am I fired up? Well, I found out that I will be presenting at the Marine Aquarium Expo April 2nd and April 3rd at the Orange County Fairgrounds in Orange County, California. So make plans to be there. It'll be a great show, and you get to meet me up close and personal. Now, the second thing I wanted to share with you guys is that this will be the last time I'll be reminding you that the only place that you can leave comments on this video is on my website, mrsaltwatertank.com. I've been enjoying the interactions and the comments that y'all have been leaving. I love to hear those and even more. So mrsaltwatertank.com if you wanna leave comments on this video. With that, let's talk about changing your aquarium's water. Now, I bet changing the water in your tank isn't on the top 10 list of things that you wanna do with your tank probably right up there with those test kits that we talked about last week. But it's an important part of keeping your tank looking great. Because keep in mind that our tanks, they're closed systems, unlike the ocean, which is an open system. Now an open system means that there's new salt water coming in and there's old salt water leaving at any moment in time. Our tanks are closed systems. That means nothing gets in and nothing gets out unless we put it in or take it out. So therefore, doing a regular water change is an important part of keeping your tank thriving and looking great. Now, here's some other reasons why doing a water change is important. Water changes are a great way to lower certain tank parameters. Let's say your nitrates were too high. By doing a large water change, you can lower those nitrates down again. On the flip side of all this, if certain tank parameters, let's say your salinity, alkalinity, magnesium, calcium, are too low, over a series of water changes, you can raise those levels back up. Remember, we want to raise any levels slowly. We don't want to do it all of a sudden. Stability is what wins in the long run. So by using water changes to raise those parameters, it's a gentler approach as opposed to dumping a lot of magnesium, alkalinity, whatever, straight into your tank to get those levels right back up. And finally, water changes are a great way to replace trace elements. There's plenty of elements that are in salt water that we can't test for. Only by doing a water change do those trace elements get replenished in your water so that your fish and corals can use them and thrive. The first step in making fresh salt water for your water change is a step that most people overlook. What is that step? Well, it's to pick up your salt bucket and give it a good shake. You're gonna wanna shake it a little bit, turn it upside down a couple times, and then take the salt out of it. Now, why are you doing that? Well, salt mix contains lots of different particles. You're gonna have salt particles in there, alkalinity buffers, magnesium buffers, calcium additives, all those things put together in a salt mix. And those particles are of different sizes. So over time, they're gonna settle out. Only by shaking your bucket do you get those particles uniformly distributed in your mix to make sure that your salt mix mixes up uniformly in the same way every single time. So step one, shake your salt bucket. Next, only add water that's been through an RODI unit like my Buckeye field supply unit here. Why are we doing that? Remember that RODI water has zero TDS in it. That means there's no chlorine, chloramines, metals, other junk, stuff that you don't want in your tank. We work hard to keep our tanks looking great, and you wanna be putting in only the purest, cleanest, highest quality stuff possible. So we don't wanna start out by making a bad salt mix by putting bad quality water in there. Therefore, zero TDS water is the way to go. Once you got your RODI water in your mixing bucket, start adding your salt. And after you've made a couple salt batches, you'll have a good idea of how many cups of salt you need to get the salinity you want. Then, add a small power head to stir the water up to help your salt dissolve. This will speed up the mixing time significantly and ensure a uniform salt mix. Here's a piece of equipment that every tank personality should have and use religiously on their tanks. A refractometer. A refractometer is used to check the salinity of your water. And they're highly accurate and they're very easy to use. All you have to do is put some water onto the lens, lay down the cover, make sure that there's no air bubbles in there so it's accurate, then look through it to get a reading for your salinity. This is very easy, and refractometers are way more accurate and easy to use than those swing arm hydrometers that you see. Those are hunks of junk. If you have one, get rid of it. Follow the link below. I'll show you which refractometer that you should be using. Once you've let your salt mix for several hours, check its salinity and add more salt if you need to. Once you get your salinity where you want it, let your salt continue to mix overnight. The next day, check the parameters again and make sure they're absolutely where you want them to be before you add it to your tank. Here's a quick tip that'll save you a lot of headaches. Take a moment 
then mark your saltwater mixing bucket, either SW or saltwater. Why do I say do this? Well, once I made up five gallons of salt water, and right beside it, I made up five gallons of fresh top off water. Well, I went to do a water change, and that five gallons of fresh water went into my salt water tank. That was a pain in the butt to deal with, and it caused me a lot of stress because all of a sudden my salinity dropped way down. So take a moment, grab a marker or sharpie, and write SW or salt water on your salt water bucket. Small step will save you a lot of headaches. One of the keys to successfully keeping a saltwater tank is to keep all your parameters as stable as possible. Think about your tank as like a grumpy old man. It doesn't like change, and when it has to change, it wants to do it as slowly as possible. So this applies even when you're changing your tank's water. What do I mean by that? Well, you want the parameters of your new salt water, that's the incoming water that you can do a water change with, to match up or be as close as possible to the parameters of your tank. So that's gonna be things like temperature, salinity, pH, alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, you want all those to match up as close as possible. Because we don't want to be throwing in new salt water that's way different than the salt water that's already in our tank and making our tank go through a little roller coaster. Remember, slow and steady wins the race. So that means as you're making up your salt water to do a water change, you're going to want to do things like check your alkalinity, see what it is, make sure it's going to match up to your tank. You're going to want to check the salinity, check the pH, check the calcium and magnesium. You want to find out where those things fall out. Now I want to take this a step further for you. You're also going to want to do this whenever you get a new bucket of salt. And this includes obviously if you're getting, let's say you're switching brands, so you're getting a new brand of salt. And it's also going to apply if you're getting a new bucket of the same brand. Because one bucket of salt mix is not the same as the next. So as you get a new bucket, as you're making up your first couple batches, Test all those parameters so you get an idea of where that bucket falls out. Once you have a pretty good idea of it, then you can ballpark it and say, well, I know that this salt mix is going to mix up like this, and I know this is where my tank is, so these are the changes that I need to do to keep those two as close as possible. Remember, slow and steady wins the race, and this includes when you're doing a water change, so match up those parameters, keep your tank stable, keep it happy. All right, it's time to do my water change. I've got my salt water here in my house ready to go. It's about the same temperature as my tank, so I'm good to go there, and I've already checked its parameters to make sure that they're as close as possible to my tank. Now, I can do my water changes in under 10 minutes, and my friend Mike doesn't believe me, so I'm just gonna let the camera roll and prove to you guys that a 10 minute water change is possible. So, here you go, here's the count. You can see I have my timer on 10 minutes, and let's get started. Here I'm using my Apex controller to help set up my fail safes. It's going to turn off metal, metal halide lights so my tank doesn't get too hot while I'm doing my water change. It's also going to turn off my heater so that my heater cannot overheat since it will be exposed to the air and out of water. I use a small power head to pull the water out of my tank. One thing that you don't want to do is use a siphon filter and siphon through your sand every time you do the water change. Your sand is really meant to stay put. Leave it where it is and don't disturb it. I want to always make sure that you have plenty of towels around because you're probably going to make a mess. I still got five minutes. Almost two minutes to spare. How's that? There you go. Ten minute water change. One of the bonuses of doing a weekly water change at a smaller amount as opposed to doing a bi-monthly or once a month, big water change. Last time out of your schedule, more likely that you're actually gonna get it done. Now what do you do with all that salt water that you just poured out of your tank? You guessed it, pour it right on your lawn. Now a lot of people think, well if you pour salt water on your grass, it's gonna kill it. And this is true if you put all that salt water in one area. But if you spread it out over the course of your whole yard, not a problem. I've been doing it for years and my lawn looks great. So water your yard, save yourself some of that water bill. Doing regular water changes is part of keeping your tank looking great and ensuring that everything continues to run smoothly. And there'll be plenty of people who say, I haven't done a water change in weeks, months, or years, and my tank looks great. Absolutely. I bet there's some people out there, and if that's you, props to you. However, at some point, it's going to catch up with you. Remember, I'm all about being proactive with our tank care as opposed to being reactive to when problems come up. So by doing your regular water changes, you're helping preventing problems from even popping up in the first place. 
Well, I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Until next time, have a good one, enjoy your tanks, and know your tank personality.